ein cooles Magazin ist ASEAN. This is the real representation of Harajuku culture. A super sick magazine from the 2000s burst. Things you maybe cannot post about anymore in these days. 2000s, like Harajuku fashion. And I also just like writing about weird stuff in the Inaka. I need to come here and be part of all of this culture. Hello my friends, my name is Bianco, I'm the editor-in-chief of Savokaru and the founder and creative director of Bianco Bianco, Hidoshku. Okay, so today we are at the Savokaru office. Um, basically, we are a cultural magazine that is based in Tokyo, that looks at Japanese culture and subculture, but also on a wider angle on Asian or worldwide global culture, fashion, movies, anime, manga, everything that you can put on the warm box and call it Sabukaru. that's us. So right now we have our Instagram channel and we have our website, website for really long articles. Instagram also for quite a lot of texts. As a total secret that I'm gonna talk about for the first time ever, we're also working on a print magazine right now. We also do video. I would say we're not limited by anything. Sabukaru gonna do everything and anything, left, right, up, down diversity in all its forms and media. Yeah, we're gonna be everywhere. We started Sabukaro. I used to love to come to Japan. And Japan on the first level, let's say Mario first level, is amazing. Shibuya Crossing, Ichiran Ramen, all the stores in Harajuku. But it's just the first level. And I realized that many people that love Japan or subculture from Japan, even Asian culture in general, they just stay on level one. It's nice there, it's cool. But I realized there's so much more and if you're in a country like Japan, everything is super wide, super deep and I wanted to dig really deep into that um, and that's why I formed my team and that's what we're doing every day. Yeah, we're trying to really translate in between cultures as good as we can. It's a good time to talk about room floor number one. This is where we usually hang out. We kind of thought about if we want to clean everything up. But honestly, I want it to be as real as possible. We have fashion productions every day. There's a lot of things happening. There's some shoes we're gonna release. There's unreleased Adidas stuff we're not allowed to show. So the cows here is 100% real, but the main point of this floor is actually this bookshelf, which is slowly becoming our main archive of everything we do. It's a legendary bookshelf in the making. I need 10 more years to make it really big. Obviously, through the years and through our research, we found out a lot of cool stuff. For example, every foreign that talks about Popper magazine, but the coolest magazine is ASEAN. This is the real representation of Harajuku culture. Has all the designers in there that we know, and way more important, has all the designers in there from Harajuku most people do not know about. All the shops, everybody who did amazing, great stuff, but might not have made it in the spotlight, like the five, six big ones. And that's what it's really Sabukaru about, like everybody, and not just about the big names. Sabukaru is not just about big prominent figureheads. We really want to talk about everybody, all people that did special or still doing special stuff. And this kind of is the past section of Sabukaru, because we also talk about the future, but without this future with all of these creators, all of these designers, game designers, sound designers, graphic designers, Nothing that is happening now in Tokyo or the rest of the world will happening. So we pay always respect with Sabukaru to the originators. I kind of like this one. I think Universal Studio released a 3D ride and therefore they did like a connection between Godzilla and Evangelion. It's super rare, super random, very Sabukaru. I don't even know if you can show this. We have a super sick magazine from the 2000s first. It's full of crazy stuff, things you maybe cannot post about anymore in these days. Because we like subculture, we also like everything about culture, like even the deep, sometimes dark stuff. So this is full of good things, or like here, Fruits Magazine, Metal Gear Solid, Stone Island, Massimo Osti, everything that is Sabukaro you can actually find here. Here, the Evangelion, Godzilla, Popcorn bag, 
Verdi beer, Shlomo. So this is like a very well representation of what we are because we pretty random, straightforward laser. Smart, stupid, random. That's us, yeah. So basically, when I was young, I wouldn't say I was an otaku or something, but I liked manga, I liked anime. Um, I like growing up on this particular culture, like video games. And I kind of knew that in Japan, it's the home of so many things I like, even streetwear, even fashion. Um, I worked kind of very hard, but got money super late to get my first ticket to Tokyo. With 28, I was in Tokyo and on my first night, I was like, I need to move here. And usually I have many friends or so many people that like a country and then they go there for holiday. And I was like, I don't want to become a person who has a space that inspires him or her. And then you go there twice a year. I was like, no, 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 no. I need to come here and be part of all of this culture. Um, so I came here, like I, I worked three years in and out on many projects, marketing, Vice Magazine, market research, fashion production. And then after three years, I managed to start my own small company back then in a three meter, three square meter room in Chimbashi. And then I met all the amazing people. Actually, that's very important. I always talk, we talk about myself, but that's actually unfair. My whole company, Sabukar, is full of great, talented people. And I'm just lucky that they work around me and I can help them. And they help me, of course. So the question was why I'm here, because I'm happy here. Yeah, that's it. So this random corner of our office with fashion boxes and what do I know is a super good representation of what we actually do. So there's Sabukaro the magazine, but then there's Bianco Bianca the agency. So basically what we're doing is fashion production, consulting, pop-ups, events. And I'm just going to give you an example on all of these things. Here's a young designer from Santa San Martin, Luca Hammers. We help him with showrooms in Paris, help him to get into stores in Tokyo. There's a brand, CCP, we work a lot with them. They mainly are friends, but we do cool stuff together. Like, I think this is a sample of a collab jacket that's going to come out. So basically, Sabukaro somehow is our passion project, very free, very creative. We don't want to make it a business because I used to work at magazines and now I know how bad magazines get if money is the focus. No money focuses on Sabucaro, I don't care, even though it costs money. But then we have Bianco Bianco, a creative agency. We do super cool stuff, the Sabucaro way, and we work with clients. So there's a lot of maybe stuff out there, fashion productions that actually need it. There's just not a Sabucaro stamp on it. It's usually Bianco Bianco work. And basically everybody who wants to do something creative in Tokyo, either foreign brands or even Japanese brands, they come to us and then, uh, not everybody, but we're trying that. And, and try to work with us. And um, this is how we pay the bills of this very crazy big team. Yeah, this is what we're doing every day. Basically, everywhere in the office is everything, so many details. So this is the way to the second floor. We have Godzilla here. We have shoes by Mr. Bailey, super cool designer. We have Comme de Garçons Nike. We have our Kumade that we take a new one. We get a new one every year, but as I told you, we don't know everything. So I heard about that this brings luck to the company. Um, so I bought a big one to get a lot of luck, but then I realized I need to buy a bigger one every year. So we are already super expensive. So probably in five years, I need to have like a, like a tree that I carry to the office. So this is our commander. Thanks for everything, helping us a lot. Let's go upstairs. Here's another artist that we work with a lot, Yami P. Everybody probably knows Yami P. I don't have to introduce him, but we did an exhibition with him. Right now we have it hanging here. We get so many clients, artists, what do I know from around the world that come and everybody sticks with Yami P images here. And now we're in the second floor. It is um, uh, not busy today. Um, this is where we do Sabukaru. There's also Gata magazine. We have a second magazine actually, way cooler than Sabukaru month sometimes. And we have our agency stuff here. I think everybody is acting like we're not here, so let's respect them. But Aura is here and she's gonna talk to us. Aura, what are you doing? Hey, what's up? Uh, my name is Aura and I'm a writer and editor at Sabucaro Online. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Aura, what made you join Sabucaro? Um, I joined Sabucaro because I'm a nerd and I spent too much time on Reddit and now I have to put my knowledge to some sort of use. What is a typical Aura? By the way, I'm sorry I'm hosting this now. Um, what is a typical um, Aura Sabukaro article? What, is, what are the topics you, you write for us about? Um, so right now I'm like really into 
mm, like Geiger style, like 2000s, like Harajuku fashion. Um, and I also just like writing about weird stuff in the Inaka. That's how I find my best stuff is like going to like the suburbs of Tokyo, like Adachiku or like, I don't know, I was in like Edogawa the other weekend. And like, you just always find the cutest stuff and the most unexpected stuff. It's not all in Tokyo, guys. Take a train to Chiba or Saitama and maybe you'll find something cool. But yeah, uh, what's a typical article? I think I usually do the interviews um, and that's my favorite part because I always want to ask people weird questions in real life, but I feel like it's too personal. So an interview is like the perfect time to ask everything I wanted to ask. And I usually want to know what my favorite people like to do in their free time, like how they take their coffee or like my favorite people's favorite people. Because eventually you go down a rabbit hole of like history of your, fav your favorite person's favorite people and you find like even better stuff. So it's like a continuous circle of recommendations from people that I think are cool. Yeah. We have a lot of great people working at Sabu and some people make the mistake that they always think Sabu Karu is Mr. Bianco because they know me from six, seven years ago, but Sabu Karu is all the writers here. I don't even have the time anymore to write stuff. So it's literally all the other people that are here and not here today. So um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a big team of really cool kids and people, humans, all them young. And that's us, yes. And I guess there was it for a second floor. Let's go to the third floor um, where I sit, where it's very chaotic. Very nice place. Cool. So we go now to the third floor. I'm sorry in advance, it's very chaotic. We right now reorganizing our storage. So this is the fullest, most busy floor. It's just actually my room, but as you can see, there's boxes, 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 full of books, fashion, archive fashion, Ura Harajuku, poster, our merchandise more Johnny Terror stuff. We have a photo studio here. We scan our stuff here. It's very chaotic. It's not nice. I said I was thinking to clean it up, but clean it up a little bit, but um, I left it pretty real. So welcome to my spot. This is where I sit. There's another Johnny Terror. Look, here are our artists. I don't know if you can see it. Yamapi. Yamapi. Exit number five. This is me, Johnny Terror. I have all my friends next to me. I'm never alone. Welcome to the desk. We don't really look into trends or whatever is hot right now. Doesn't mean we don't talk about hot things, but it really comes first and always from our own interest. Whatever we want to write about, we write about. Usually a lot of topics come from myself and my notes. I have endless amount of notes in my phone. I really don't know where all these ideas come from. Usually when I cycle, when I walk around, like a good example, I just thought about it last time. I sit in a ramen store and then I see at the ramen place, you for girls, there are these headbands to turn around, do a ponytail when they eat the ramen soup. And it was like, wow, there's actually such a good Sabukaro article. I don't know if we're ever going to do it, but you know, like random moments, ordinary life sometimes creates like a spark. And basically we have thousands of ideas because we have the past, we have the present, and we have the future. And as long the planet doesn't explode, even though we work hard on it, we might um, have some time to have endless topics for Sabukaro. You want to see something that means a lot to me. <laughs> There's a lot. Obviously, Verdi gave us this amazing beer. We like beer. Nunchucks, we did a really cool video with Nunchuck Princess. There's Peter Takeshi, the greatest actor of the planet. So everything here is full of stuff. I'm just gonna give you a random... Oh, nice. Game Boy Color with Game Boy Camera. Pokemon Red Original. Pokemon Yellow Original. Pokemon Green Original. Here's a lot of Urahara Chuku stuff. Oh, people might know this. Busy works. Very old babe stuff. Oh. There's a whole folder with like vintage stickers. Babe, Hysteric, Milk Boy. 
So actually there's a guy called Tetsu, one of our readers. He out of nowhere contacted me. And now out of nowhere, he brings me a lot of stuff of his whole collection. So he is super old undercover pins. So this is a lot and every box is full of this. So if you ever have time, come over. I show you a lot of stuff. I love this book, like Tokyo style. This is from this amazing editor who shot like all the different rooms in Tokyo from different people. One of the best magazines out there, Idea Magazine. It's crazy good how their graphic design and their layout design is. It's an absolute inspiration. And if our Sabukaru print magazine just becomes half as cool as this, then we can be very lucky. Yeah, respect. So I think we know so many people and so many people like us. Because first of all, many of our writers are part of the scene, part of the underground or art scene. But I think many artists, many designers, they know we work every day on Sabukaru, like super crazy, hours after hours. All these articles take so long. We don't get paid for this. Like nobody pays for a Sabukaru article. We don't have any advertising on the, on the online. We really don't really do jobs with Sabukaru. Obviously, sometimes we shoot something, but everybody in the scene knows we're just doing this because we super crazy because we love passion because we love culture we love subculture we love all of these things and we're investing hours after hours to give other creatives a platform which i really love to do so i think that's why people kind of are happy to work with us or do something with us collaborate with us or get interviewed because first of all we're just a bunch of crazy people that care a lot about culture and that's the main topic. As I said, like Sabukaru is not, does not exist to become a business. Sabukaru exists to be Sabukaru. And many people know that. That obviously means a lot of stress because um, we need to make money, obviously, to pay everybody who works here. That's why we also do Bianco Bianco. And obviously it helps. We get like many productions on the other side. But first of all, it's a very crazy company. A lot of people are just here because they love it versus people go to work because they have to. So um, I think people understand that and that's why people hang with us and party with us and do anything else with us, hopefully in the future. And, and of course, thanks a lot to everybody who is part of Sabukaru. We are absolutely nobody without you. Muchas gracias. I think Sabukaru, there were a few, few maybe success points along our way. One definitely was when um, Undercover collaborated with Evangelion. I was in a showroom and they showed these three masks. And I think in a showroom, everybody thought, who is this idiot? Because I was in front of the mask maybe 15 minutes to take the perfect picture. I remember we uploaded it with all the information and it has been it blew up on the internet. And it was maybe the first time that we got worldwide recognition. But I think in general, there's two things that help us. We just work very hard and steady. So it's a slow growth. And I think what also happens is we got bigger and bigger. And now, obviously, we can interview big stars, very big names, big designers. But I realized if we just interview big names, big designers, then we just like anybody else. Of course, we're going to interview them if we respect them. But I think what really helps us to grow is that we write about everybody and everything. Nobody needs to be a superstar. Nobody needs to be the next biggest designer. Like I would love to interview a taxi driver. I would love, the whole team would love to interview one of the grandmas who sits in the center and gives you, gives you the towels. I, I think we really grow because we, we're not limited by hype or we're not focusing on, on hype. Doesn't mean we don't write about hype, but we are just way more into real people. And that's very Sabukaru because subculture is everywhere. No matter, you know, that's like everything in Japan. You sit in Izakaya and out of nowhere, this 50 year old guy talks about his favorite Peter Cashing movie or favorite manga, favorite anime. Everybody goes so deep. So almost everybody deserves a story about him or herself. So that's Sabukaru. Yeah, I think when it comes to the reception um, of Japanese subculture in the world, and it's also a very good example for our magazine. So when I grew up being into Japanese anime, manga, all of these kind of nerdy otaku stuff, you've been almost like an outsider. But now I think maybe back then it was very cool 10 years ago to have the most hype sneakers, to have the best outfit. I think the kids now that know about 
deep subculture things, mostly from Japan, also other countries. People who are really into these kind of things, have a lot of hobbies, go deep into topics. These are the new cool kids. If you know about subculture, and if you're part of subculture, you do something important or you follow something important. And I think this really changed the last five, 10 years. And I do believe that Sabokaro always almost has become like, you know how maybe the big fashion magazines are for all the high beats or for all the high fashion lovers. I think Sabokaro itself is a whole new genre of people that like many, many different things that used to be maybe outsider stuff, partly. And now everything together is one mix of like, oh, I can be into manga. Oh, I can be into the latest Salomon shoe. Oh, I can be into this weird TV show. Or maybe I'm into this artist. I also like Japanese trap. I also like UK archive pages. Like, I think it becomes like a whole new genre. Like, it's, I always want to, I want to create a Sabokaru mindset. Or not, I don't want to, I think it just happens. People are out of nowhere Sabokaru. Like, Japanese subculture, Asian subculture or culture in general is like so interesting and it's really everybody outside Japan loves it. That's why every week so many stars are here. I think Tokyo is one of the only cities where you can bump into Lil Uzi in a store, where you can meet your favorite band in a bar and everybody is so happy and friendly because I think they all just happy to be in Japan. So you guys are on a, on a good wave right now and, uh, and we are happy we can be part of this. I mean, I think right now, there's two things that I really find super interesting. One is the music and club scene in Tokyo right now. I feel like after or during Corona, many Japanese parties kind of, crews kind of got together and did their own very interesting parties. Um, there's so many artists like Jun Inagawa does techno and EC. Then there's um, Tokyo Vitamin who does best hip hop parties. There's a lot of many cool smaller labels that do really cool club nights. So I think Music right now is higher than ever, especially the young scene. Like there's a big, big trend. And I believe now almost 30 years after Nigo, I feel like there's a new generation of fashion designers. There's Verdi like who, who flows over everybody. And same back then as you, Roshi, um, he keeps the scene together. He supports everybody. Um, he helps people. And then there's even a younger generation of young designers like Jan Ye, Rio, my back is from it. Um, uh, there's so so many brands, Fakers Flowers, um, all these kind of young brands right now, uh, car service, all these brands kind of making an impact. And I think that's super interesting right now. Um, so yeah, it's music and it's fashion as always. Like these two are always kind of connected. And I think in the youth scene, that's really boiling right now. So my dreams or my future vision for Sabucaro I really want to do this forever. I've been having like a kind of good job back then in Europe, way more money, um, but I've never been so happy. So now I'm happy every day, super excited. In my dream world, we're doing Sabu Cover the next 50, 60, 70 years. I want to do more videos. I want to do more. I want to do print magazine as mentioned. I want to do, I want to just do everything of this. And I want to be able to continue working with such great people that are in my team. So my future vision is just Sabu Kaur is forever and hopefully stays forever. Yeah, that's it.